Well, good evening. This is certainly the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, you are tuned in live to United Fellowship Full Gospel Baptist Church right here in the beautiful city of New Orleans, Louisiana, in the heart of the 7th Ward and District D. We're so excited uh, that you are sharing in the house of the Lord with us, of course honor God on tonight. We honor Jesus Christ and we honor the Holy Ghost on tonight. The Blessed Trinity, they're already in the building and I'm so glad that you are joining us on tonight. Of course, to all of our members uh, that are in the house, we truly, truly thank God for you. And of course, to all of our virtual audience, our streaming audience, those who so faithfully tune in every Thursday to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying, we truly appreciate you. Facebook, Instagram, Periscope, all of our social media family. We love you. We appreciate you. Make sure uh, that you like uh, our service on tonight. Tag somebody. Start a watch party. This is the way that we virtually evangelize and let people know what God is doing right here at United Fellowship Full Gospel Baptist Church. Of course, uh, again, I thank God for all of our leaders who are here on tonight, to our pastors, our elders, our deacons, everybody. We thank God for you. To my lovely wife, whom I love and honor and appreciate, uh, Talithia Bhutan, I thank God for her and my children, Talia and Brandon, I just love you all so, so much and thank God for you. Listen, we want to remind you, of course, don't forget to join us this Sunday at 9.30 a.m. right here in the house of the Lord. Listen, if you missed last Sunday, you missed a blessing. I tell you, the Spirit of the Lord moved mightily in this place. I was so excited. I mean, literally, the phones have been ringing. People have been calling, save my seat. I want to be in the house of the Lord. I think it has something to do with our anointed praise team and our band that was back in the house of the Lord. They truly made a difference. And so I'm excited about that. And I thank God for them and the anointing that is on their life. And they're going to be back. It's going to be powerful on Sunday. So join us right here at 930 a.m. If you want to be here, just call our office number at 504-949-2559 uh, to reserve your seat. And of course, We'll be streaming. We'll be live on all of our social media platforms as well. Listen, what we did also, we reinstituted our conference call line. Uh, some of our members say they, they don't, they're not social media savvy. They're not tech savvy. So they wanted to listen uh, to service by phone. So you see the earpiece in my ear. So if you want to listen via conference call line, you can do that tonight. You can dial in at area code 302-202-1108. And then that code is 662070 if you want to join on our conference call line on tonight. And then finally, of course, we want to remind you, if you're giving on tonight, a couple of ways you can do that. You can give using Givelify. You can search United Fellowship, Full Gospel Baptist Church if you want to do that. Or if you want to mail that those tithes, those offerings in, you can do that at P.O. Box 8912. Uh, that's New Orleans, Louisiana, zip code 70182. That information is on your screens. If you're on social media, uh, you can see that right there, right now. And, of course, if you want to call the office and drop those tithes, drop those offerings off, you can do that. Uh, that number again, 504-949-2559. Well, again, we thank God for all of you who are tuned in on tonight uh, to our Word Explosion uh, Hour. This is a time where we, I get a chance to, to kind of be Pastor Brandon, not all excited and up and up like I am on Sundays, but just to, to share with you uh, what God is saying to me to teach you uh, the Word of God on tonight. And so th I appreciate, again, uh, Brother Brandon Butler, who's joining our family, and we appreciate him so much, uh, doing an awesome, awesome job. I appreciate you, Pete. Thank you so much. Of course, I honor all of the DJ and Alvin, Ani, all of our praise. So I just thank God for you. They're in the house practicing, doing a great job. And so I honor you all and I thank God for you all on tonight. Listen, I want to jump right into the word of the Lord uh, for a few moments on tonight. I want to go to the book of Proverbs, a familiar passage for so many of us who've been in church for a while. The book of Proverbs, Proverbs, the third chapter, and I'll begin reading at the fifth verse. Proverbs, the third chapter beginning at the fifth verse. And this is what the word of the Lord says. It says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. For a little while on tonight, I just want to teach from the subject 
trusting God. Trusting God. God, Father, we thank you, we honor you, we adore you, we thank you for your presence on tonight. God, we, we thank you that you're in this place. We ask that you would touch each and every individual that is in the house, those who are watching via streaming, via social media. Be with them now. Open their eyes, open their, art, their hearts, and open their ears to hear what you're saying on tonight. We give you the praise, we give you the honor, we give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Trusting God. Uh, my, my lesson on tonight stems from a conversation that I had earlier this week with a good friend of mine. Uh, we talk just about every morning. As a matter of fact, he's here on tonight. John is in the building, and we talk just about every morning. And we're talking about life in general. We're just talking about life. And so many times those conversations about life delve into all of the different issues that we're dealing with in society today. We talk about our current political climate. We talk about the socioeconomics of the world. And to top it off, we talk about being in the middle of a pandemic. To be honest with you, people are going through a lot in this season. We're all dealing with a lot in this season. And I don't pull any punches. It's rough. It's hard out there. We are literally being tested on every hand. And then right in the middle of being tested, we've been asked and we're being told as a people that we have to trust. We've been told that we have to trust. We're literally in a position where we're being forced to trust people that have authority over us in many situations. We've been told we have to trust. What do I say? What do I mean when I say trust? I'm talking about to believe in the reliability of a thing, the strength of a thing, to allow someone to have use or look after something that is of importance to us with confidence. You tell somebody, I trust you with my life. Trust. Talking about trust, talking about commit to the safekeeping of a thing, to have faith or confidence in something, to trust. We've been asked to trust. We've been asked to put reliance in certain things. We've been asked to put our trust in the leaders who are in the current elected office to make the right decisions for us. We've been asked to trust these leaders. Yeah. We're asked to trust our employers. We're asked to trust them. If you work for a company or an organization, we have to trust the individuals that are higher than us. We're trusting the fact that our paychecks will go through. We have to trust. We're being asked to trust the medical community right now. In the middle of a pandemic, we've been asked to trust people as it relates to this virus. Do we get the shot? We say, I, I know what they did with the Tuskegee Airmen. I'm not getting no shot. I'm not getting. We've been asked to trust. Do we get tested? Oh, I'm fine. I don't need to get tested. Do we trust, 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 trust? We have been asked to trust people. This past Sunday, as a matter of fact, y'all see this on my finger. I was at home this past Sunday getting taken out the trash. And as I'm taking out the trash, I'm putting some stuff in the trash bag, and I didn't pay attention. When I pushed down the trash bag, I didn't realize that there was an open can in the trash bag. And so I pushed down on the trash bag, and I jumped up. I thought I got electrocuted, but then when I pulled my hand out, there was blood splashing over everywhere all over the house. My daughter's looking at me, my two-year-old, oh, my goodness, Daddy, you're making a mess all over the floor. Blood is going everywhere. And I'm trying to be cool, calm, and collective because I see this big gash in my hand and blood is on everywhere. I drive myself to the emergency room, and even though I'm, I'm scared, I'm in shock, and I'm in pain, I still had the trust that everybody in the hospital had my best interest at heart. I had the trust when they said, calm down, you're going to be okay. I had the trust when I'm looking at blood running down my arm. I, got to, I had the trust when it's, it's going to be all right. I don't know what's going on. It turns out I had cut an artery in my finger and had to get seven stitches in, but I had the trust as they sticking me with needles and giving me tetanus shots and all this stuff and sewing my finger back up. I had the trust 
the people that were right in front of me. And to be honest with you, that wasn't easy to put my trust in them. And they're right there in front of my face. And I'm supposed to rely on these people to take care of me. It's not easy to trust. So if that's the case, if it's that hard to trust the people that are right in front of us, the people that we work for, the people that we put in office, the people in the medical community, if it's that hard or that comp, sometimes it's hard to even trust the people you in relationship with. It's hard to trust the people you are in, you go to church with. It's hard to trust. So if we're honest with ourselves, If it's that hard to trust people, how am I supposed to trust a God I can't see? Real conversations. How? how, how, It's hard to trust God sometimes. It's hard to trust a God that you cannot see. It's hard to trust something that you can't see in front of you. It's hard to trust someone to a God that you can't see behind you. It's hard to trust a God that you can't touch or you can't feel. It is hard sometimes. It is not easy by any stretch of the imagination. It is literally a process. Trusting takes time. No one develops trust overnight. No one in here, no one watching online trusts your significant other, your marriage, your spouse. You didn't just automatically trust them over time, overnight. It took time. It was a process. It was something that had to be developed over time. So it's the same way in trusting God. It is a process. One that has to be developed. So on tonight, I wanted to jump in and kind of dissect the process on tonight as it relates to trusting God. Now, in, in our main text on tonight, we are instructed to trust the Lord. What does that mean? The verse I read, Proverbs 3 and 5, said, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. We are instructed in verse 5 to trust. That word trust literally means to rely, to depend on God. The, the, uh, The Arabic definition literally of the word trust in the text is to literally to throw oneself down upon his face to lie extended upon the ground. You are supposed to trust God that much. The instruction is to trust him so much that I'm literally throwing myself down, putting my face on the ground and saying, I am turning myself over to you. Trust in the Lord. Trust in Yahweh. Trust in him. Rely on him. Depend on him. Throw yourself down at his feet. Lie your face down in front of him. Extend yourself to the ground. Trust in the Lord. That is the directive that you have to trust in the Lord. That's one thing to trust in the Lord. Just like I said, it's one thing to trust somebody. I trust you. Okay, I got you. I trust you. I trust you, God. But listen to what it says. Not only do you trust in the Lord, it says, but to trust in him with all your heart. You've been directed to trust in the Lord with all thine heart. That literally means all thy inner self. I've been asked to trust God with my inner self, with my heart, with the inclination on the inside of me, with my will, with my attention, with my determination, with my courage, with my will and my reason. I am supposed to trust God with everything that is in me. This is what you're being asked to do when it says to trust God. I mean, I trust God with my inner man. I got to trust him with my emotions. Trust him with my feelings. Trust him with my attention. Trust him with my will and my reason. Everything, the heart is the center of your emotions. 
the heart, the center of your emotions, you are being asked to trust Yahweh. Trust God with everything that is in you. That is what's being asked of you when it talks about trusting God. And not only am I supposed to trust in the Lord with all thine heart. The Bible says not only that, but I have to what? I have to lean. Lean. Lean on him. I've been asked to, to lean on him, which means literally to trust him with all my heart and lean not. To my own understanding. The songwriter says not only do you have to trust in God, but it is imperative in life that you lean on him. So not only do I have to trust you with everything is in me, not only do I have to trust you with my whole heart, but now you're saying that in order to fulfill that whole commandment, I have to lean on you. What does it mean to lean on the Lord? It means literally to lie supported. When I'm talking about lean, it means to make oneself comfortable. You know what I mean? When you see somebody just leaning, they're comfortable leaning on something. I don't have to stand because I trust. All right now, I'm, I'm leaning on this podium, and I'm trusting that this podium is not going to fall over. I'm trusting, and I'm comfortable leaning on this position, meaning I don't have to stand up because I'm comfortable. I don't have to worry about anything because I know this pulpit is supporting me. And so we're being asked to trust God just like that, to lean on him like I'm leaning on this pulpit, whereas he becomes your support system so I don't have to stand by myself I just lean on him trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not listen lean not lean not to your own understanding you're supposed to lean on the Lord but the problem that many of us run into we start leaning on ourselves. You lean on your own understanding, meaning your own wisdom and your own knowledge. If you're going throughout life leaning on your own knowledge and depending on your own strength to get you through, you'll never develop trust in God. If you think you know everything, if you think you got the answers to all the problems, you think you don't need God, all you're doing is just leaning on yourself. The Bible says don't lean on your own understanding. There are some things in this world we just cannot comprehend. There are some things that I don't have the answer to. I don't have the answer to why bad things happen to good people. I don't. And so instead of me trying to figure out why this happened to me, why did the pain happen to me? Why did I lose somebody I love? Me, instead of me trying to figure it out, instead of me trying to make sense of it, that's me leaning on my own understanding. And every time I try to lean on my own understanding, you know what? I end up confused. Every time you try to lean on yourself, or lean, not only on yourself, sometimes we have a tendency to lean on other people. If I call Deacon Jackson up here right now, and I leaned on him, I'd be good for a little bit. But eventually, this 220-pound frame of mine starts leaning on him long enough. You know, he's going to say, you know what, pal, I love you, but man, you can't keep leaning on me like this. You start moving, and that's what happens when you start leaning on people. You start leaning on things that don't have a strong support system. And then you find out that the thing you've been leaning on, when it gets tired of you, guess what? It lets you go. And then you messed up because the thing you were leaning on is the thing you trusted with all your heart. And so now you fall, now your heart messed up, now your heart broken, and what happens? You don't trust nobody because you were leaning on the wrong thing. The directive is there. You were leaning on a job. You were leaning on a gig. You were trusting that person to come through. You were leaning on them. But the Bible is very clear and when it comes to trusting God that you have to trust in God with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. There's a way that seemeth right unto man. 
but the end thereof is not good. Your mind, the devil will always try to tell you, oh, no, don't, you don't have to do this. You do that. Do this. Don't, don't do that. No. Don't lean on your own understanding. But here's what the word says. Instead of leaning on your own understanding, we're talking about trusting God. It says what in verse six, in all your ways, meaning your, your ways, meaning your journey. You got to understand that life is a journey. You are on. All of us have a different journey, but we end up at the same destination. We all have a journey that we're going on. And so the Bible is very clear as it relates to trusting God. It says on your journey in all your ways while you are on your journey. There is something that you need to do. It says in all thy ways while on your journey, what I want you to do is what? Acknowledge him. We're trying to develop trust on tonight. We're talking about trust in God. If you want to develop trust in God, it means in all your ways, while you are on life's journey, you have to acknowledge him. When I say acknowledge, and y'all learn me, United Fellowship, I'm big on word studies and word breakdowns because the words in the text, if you don't understand them, it, 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 you can mess you up. The definition of these words changes the whole context of what we're saying. So he said, in all your ways, while you're on your journey, we're talking about trusting God. You got to acknowledge him. Acknowledge him means you got to recognize his rights. To acknowledge somebody means to recognize the rights, the knowledge, and the status of the problem on our, in our life is that we get on our journey and we don't acknowledge God anymore. Because you've been leaning on your own understanding because you think you're doing this by yourself. And so you get to a certain point in your life where you, you're leaning on your own self. You're leaning on your gifts. You're leaning on your talents. You're leaning on everything else. And then you stop giving God the glory and you don't acknowledge him on your journey. You start thinking you're doing this all by yourself because you're leaning on your own understanding. And then the thing you're leaning on starts cracking. And the thing you've been leaning on starts breaking. And then you fall flat on your face and you wonder how in the world that I get here because you weren't trusting me. You weren't leaning on me. You won't even acknowledge that I gave you the gifts and the talents that you have. Acknowledge me. This is what God, if you want to trust me, acknowledge me. Recognize his rights. Recognize the knowledge that he has. Give him his proper due. In all your ways, in your journey to trust in God, you got to learn how to acknowledge his status. You got to wake up in the morning before you ask God for anything. You got to say, God, I acknowledge who you are. I got to say, God, you are still Jehovah Jireh. You are still my provider. You are still the omnipotent God. You're the still omniscient God. You're the all-knowing and ever-present God. You are my refuge. You, I have to acknowledge who God is. And the more I acknowledge him, that means the more I'm leaning on him and I'm recognizing who he is. But something happens. Listen, it's right here in the Bible. In all thy ways on your journey, if you acknowledge him, and you recognize his rights, look at what happens. Simple stuff, y'all. It's not deep. The Bible said if you acknowledge him, what will happen? He said, and he shall what? Direct your path. It's simple. To stay. It's right here in the book. If you would acknowledge him, the Bible says immediately, if you acknowledge him, if you acknowledge and recognize his rights, then what ends up happening? He, meaning the Lord, meaning Yahweh, what does he do? He will direct your path. And again, I love breaking down these words because literally that word direct in the text means straight. It means smooth. It means right. The Bible says if you acknowledge him, he will smooth your path. I 
now straighten out the path. There's some crooked places and some crooked pathways in your life, and you've been going down some rocky roads, but all God is saying, if you learn how to trust me, if you acknowledge who I am, if you give me my just due, if you start leaning on me instead of leaning on your own understanding, then what happens when you start to develop a trust in me is I start to straighten out all the crooked pathways in your life. I start to make the road smooth that used to be rocky. And so guess what? You don't have to worry about certain things anymore because now you put your trust, you put your reliance, you laying face down. So now I am responsible for you. And what good father wants to see his children go down a rocky path? I got some fathers in here tonight. You're not going to let your children go down a rocky path if you can help it. So God said, if you recognize me, then what will I do? I will smooth out the paths. Paths meaning the way and the behavior. Even in your own life, if you acknowledge me, I'll make your behavior change. If you acknowledge me, there are some ways about your own self that you don't like. There are some things in your life that you want to change about you. There's something, if you be honest with yourself, so you got to be, this is why I like Bible study, because we can be honest with ourselves. There's some things in our own lives that we don't like. There's some ways in our own life that there are things that we want to change. I know every day, God, search my heart. There's some things that I know that shouldn't be in me. God, I need you to search it. I need you to take it out. But he can't take it out if you don't trust him and give him the ability to do it. I couldn't stop my finger from bleeding if I didn't trust the nurses that came in there to help me. And guess what? For them to help me, I still had to get a shot to numb it up. That didn't feel good. God said, if you trust me, some things have cut you in life. But trust me, and it cuts you unexpectedly. Boy, if y'all saw me jumping at house when I cut my hand like that, unexpectedly it cut me. You're dealing with some unex... Some people watching, by the thank you, Holy Ghost. There's some people watching right now, sitting in here, you're dealing with some unexpected cuts in your life. You're bleeding profusely from unexpected cuts. Life is flowing out of you because of an unexpected cut. Unexpected cut, unexpected crazy stuff. You know, it's crazy. I'm laughing, y'all, because y'all understand. This weekend, but it was literally, I, I walked in my Sunday morning trying to come to church. I come in, I go run, I come home. I walk upstairs, it's dark in my daughter's room. As soon as I open the door, a big old bird just got in the house. It started flying at me. I'm like, what in the world? Crazy stuff. Burn my hand that Sunday after church. Then cut my finger and that gets crazy stuff. We deal with crazy stuff. Unexpected things. Some of us have some unexpected cuts in life. God is saying, trust me when the unexpected cuts happen. I'll, I'll, I'll direct your path. I'll get you to the hospital. I'll get you where you need to be. I'll fix you up. Trust me. In all your ways, acknowledge me, and I will direct your path. I'm telling you guys, this is so awesome. This is so powerful to hear what trusting in God will do. It sounds great. It sounds wonderful. When I say, man, trust the guy, he going to do that. He going to direct the path. He going to make the way straight. He going to help deal with my unexpected cuts in life. That is awesome. That is powerful. But I want to dig into how we develop that relationship. Again, it's good to say that. It sounds good for Bible study. It sounds good to like that on Facebook. It sounds good to share. It, it'll get you a couple of likes. It may get you some followers. It'll get you an amen. It sounds good. But how do you really develop that thing? 
How do we really get to that level of trust in God as believers? How do we really get to the point of leaning and depending on him totally? How do we really get to that point? I'm glad you asked that question because so many times when we hear that scripture, that's many times, that's the only one we hear. It sounds good on Sunday morning when I say, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. I can hoop that and do Man, it sounds real good on those few verses, but we tend to focus on those two verses. And we forget the verses that came before that. That's the key. That's the important one. If you want to understand how to develop your trust in God and bring your relationship with him to the next level, because that's what we're all about here at United Fellowship. I'm thankful for the people. I'm thankful for the team. But I know my job as the pastor is to help you get to the next level in your life of trusting God, because I know what God wants to do for you. I know that God wants to bless you. I know that he wants to give you an abundance of favor, but it's all going to be predicated upon your ability to trust him in not in just the good times, but in the bad times as well. You got to find a way to trust God when your back is up against the wall, when you don't have anybody else to turn to, when there's no friend answering the phone and you feel like you're in a rut. You got to know when it's more than a feeling that I can still trust and lean on God even when I don't feel like he's there. So here's the thing. How? I want, uh, how? How? How do we develop that? Got to go back. Chapter 3, verse 1. Listen to what it says. My son, forget not my law. You want to know what, what, how you start trusting me? Don't forget my law. Meaning the rules, the direction, the instructions. Stop forgetting the law. What is the law? The word of God. Don't forget the word. If you want to develop your trust in God, if you want to develop your faith in God, you got to know the word. You can't keep saying, oh, God going to come through for me. And you have no word to back it up on the inside of you. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing by the word. You can't develop faith in something you don't hear. You can't develop faith in something you don't read. Faith is another word for trust. If you don't know the word, then you don't have the faith in the trust. So he said in one, my son, forget not my law. But here it is. But let thine heart. There's that heart again. That inner self. That attention, that inner man, the center of your being, don't forget the word, but let thy heart keep thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. I have the word in your heart. Let the word get in your heart. If the word is in your heart, it does something on the inside. I'm telling you, man, it does something to a believer when trouble comes your way. And in your heart, you say, guess what? No weapon that is formed against me shall. Pro There's something about when the word is in your heart, when the doctor gives you a bad report and they tell you something about a pandemic and you see, I hear what you're saying, but in my heart it says he was wounded for my transgressions he was bruised for my iniquity the chest of my peace was upon him and with his stripes I am healed my son don't forget the law but let thy heart keep my commandments listen y'all you gotta get this word so it's in your heart cause guess what None of us are around you to see what you do. I can't, I'm not watching you 24-7. I'm not stalking your Facebook page. I'm not stalking your social media pages. But who knows all and sees all? God does. He said, get the word in your heart, in your inner man, so when things come at you, you can keep my commandments. Don't let your heart sin against me. Because the stuff starts in your heart. You want to develop trust? 
Don't forget the word. Let your heart keep the commandments. Listen to what he said, verse 2. He said, if you do this, here's, I'm t- this is how this thing works. If you don't forget the laws, if you don't forget the commandments, verse 2 says, for length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. Do y'all hear that? The Bible literally says, if you keep my commandments... Not only do you develop trust in me, but it will lengthen your days and give you long life. The problem some of us have is that we don't trust God with stuff and we get caught up in the wrong stuff and the wrong stuff is shortening your lifespan. Putting stuff in your head is shortening your lifespan because you don't trust God could heal you. You don't trust that God could deliver you from the heartbreak so you turn to drinking and you turn to smoking. It's shortening your life. Letting depression and oppression and drugs and all that addiction come over you. I'm not many talking to nobody here, but I know I'm talking to somebody in the spirit because I hear it and I see it. God said, put it in your heart and you don't have to do that. I'll deal with it. I will lengthen your days and I will give you long life. Listen to this. He said, for length of days and long life. This is in the word. He says, and peace. Here we go again, y'all. Here I go. The word, the word breakdown. The word peace in this text right here is the word shalom. He said, I will give you shalom. Here's what that means. So you got to know the word. Because I want this to be in your heart. So when you start saying, I speak this peace, it's in my heart. I want you to know what you have in your heart. This is what comes with trusting God. The peace that you will have in your heart, the peace that will be added unto you, the shalom literally means prosperity. If you have my commandments in your heart, it will give you prosperity. Not only does it mean prosperity, it means success. My word gives you success. It also means a state of wealth. You want to be wealthy? Get in the word. It means, this is what all, this is what peace means. I'm talking about peace in this text. I will give you prosperity, success, the state of wealth, friendliness, deliverance, and salvation. All that's in one word. God says, if you do the thing, if you learn how to trust me, this is what you will have. They will be added unto you. So verse 3, he says, listen, verse 3, he says, this is what I want you to do. He said, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Talking about trusting God, developing trust. Don't let mercy, meaning loyalty, faithfulness, and goodness, and truth, meaning firmness and constancy, forsake thee. If you want to keep trusting God, if you want to grow your relationship with him, it is important, it is imperative that you do not let loyalty and faithfulness and goodness and firmness leave. Don't let those things leave your life. These are things that God provides when you trust in him, but don't let them leave. Don't let them leave. I'm coming to a close on tonight. I don't want them to leave, but what I want you to do, he says, I want you to take loyalty, I want you to take faithfulness, and I want you to take goodness, and I want you to take truth, which is firmness and constancy, and I don't want you to let it leave you, but I want you to do, what I want you to do is I want you to bind them around your neck. You got to take, this is the word, take these things and tie them, bind them around your neck. Keep that around you. Keep that around you. Bind them around your neck. Not only that, he says, write them upon the table of thy what? Heart. Talking about trusting God, y'all. Tie those things around your neck. In essence, he's saying, keep it with you. Get it in your heart. And listen, he says in verse 4, So shalt thou find, what? Favor. Favor. And good understanding. Favor. What is favor in the text? Favor is grace, is charm, 
is popularity. Oh, so I, I'm telling you, but I got excited when I saw this. He said, when you trust me, I'll give you grace. I'll give you charm. I'll give you popularity and good understanding. Where? In the sight of God and man. When you trust me, this is what faith, we talk about favor. When I say I speak favor over your life, here's favor. It is grace over your life. It is charm over your life. It's right, literally, popularity. I want you to be popular. I want you to be popular. You think, well, the team we got here, United Fellowship, I want you to be worldwide. I'm speaking favor over your life. I want our singers to have grace. I want you to have charm. I want Alvin and Brandon and these. I want you to have favor and popularity, not just with God, but with men also. I'm speaking it over your life. Over the Reed and the sound team and Andrew Deacon, Deacon Davis and John I, and, and Hope and Mr. Boutain, I, I speak that over your life. I want you to have favor and grace in the sight of God and all and man. If you can do those things, if you can remember what I just told you in verses 1 through 4, now you can confidently go to verse 5 and say, guess what? Trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not into your own understanding. I'm a living witness. If you acknowledge him in all your ways, he will direct your path. Keep on trusting God on tonight. Keep on trusting God. Listen, there may be someone here, or someone online, you're watching us on tonight and you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Sinner man, sinner woman, sinner boy, sinner girl. You need Jesus and you need him now. Listen, we don't take this moment for granted. And right where you are on the altar of your hearts, if you want to accept Jesus, you can do that. If you're looking for a church home and you're saying, hey, I want to be connected with United Fellowship, the fact that you're tuning in, we consider your family. But if you want to join us, be an official member, hit us up online. Send us a message. Let us know. I want to be part of this family. Thirdly, if you're in a backslidden position, that means at one time you had a relationship with the Lord. Uh, but maybe your trust level wasn't as developed as it should be. And you faced some rocky paths. You got cut unexpectedly. And because of the unexpected cuts, you walked away from God. I'm here to tell you, God never, ever walked away from you. You can come back home, renew and restore that relationship with Christ on tonight. Fourth, if you've ordered the power of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues, I believe that God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. He's ever-present. He can meet you right where you are, and you can be filled with the Holy Ghost on tonight. So, Father, I thank you for those that are watching. God, I pray that you touch their hearts even now. God, I pray just be with them, God. If they need to be saved, if they need to join the ministry, if they need to get right with you, if they need to be filled with the Holy Ghost, do it and do it now. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you the glory. And those who are watching us, if you're accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior, do me a favor. Repeat this prayer after me. Say, dear Lord God, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. I serve you the rest of my days. I claim the victory and I believe that on today I'm saved I'm saved. I am saved. And just like that, it's already done. We appreciate you. We thank God for you. Listen, as we close on tonight, of course, this is still an act of worship. We're going to prepare to give on tonight. We're ready to do that. And of course, those of you who are watching online, we appreciate you. Those who are in the house, if you want to give on tonight, if you need an envelope, um, Deacons is in back. Deacon Davis will get you an envelope. If you need one, Deacon Jackson will get you an envelope. Uh, of course, a couple of ways you can do that. As I mentioned earlier, if you want to give, you can give using Givelify. All you got to do is download that app, go to that app and search United Fellowship Full Gospel uh, Baptist Church 
and there are areas that are already on there. Of course, even on Thursday nights, those of you who have the opportunity and the ability to tithe, you can do that. That 10% that we owe to the Lord, uh, God has blessed you. He's blessed us, and we want to continue to have that covenant relationship with Him. And that tithe ensures that we do that. Of course, if you're giving an offering, you're sowing good seed into good soil. God has promised uh, to richly, richly bless you, and we know United Fellowship is good soil. And so you want to sow that seed on tonight, of course, if you're covenant partners with the Full Gospel Baptist Church Fellowship, and you can do that on tonight. $10 a month makes you a covenant partner. $120 a year makes you a covenant partner. It's always great uh, to partner with somebody that's bigger than you, and that's what we do with Full Gospel. Of course, uh, if you want to get so into our lives, you're able to do that as well. We know God will bless you uh, in that way. Of course. And then again, if you want to mail that in, uh, you can do that, P.O. Box 8912, New Orleans, Louisiana, 70182, or call our office number, 504-949-2559. Well, we trust that. We know many of you giving online on tonight, but we trust you had ample enough opportunity to do that. So let's bow our heads and pray. Father, we thank you for every gift. We thank you for every giver. Please allow no one to suffer for what they're about to do, but they shall be blessed according to your word. We speak favor. We speak peace and prosperity over the lives of your people that are uh, in tune to what you're doing. And we thank you for them now. It's in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus that we do pray. Amen. And thank God. Well, we thank God for those of you who have given on tonight. And we bless you and we speak those blessings over your life. We know the Lord is going to bless you real, real good. Well, thank you so much, family. We appreciate you. This has been our Thursday night Bible study experience. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoy coming and sharing with you each week, breaking down the Word of God. This is our family time. And again, I remind you and invite you to join us on Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. I just feel that God is going to do something special in this place. I'm looking forward to the anointing that will be here. I know lives will be changed. I know people will be set free. I know the music will be awesome, will be powerful, and the deliverance will be uh, just in the atmosphere. I'm speaking it. I'm already praying, believing, fasting for you, and I know God is going to do some great things throughout this ministry. And so now as we get ready to go, Father, we thank you. We honor you. We bless you. We thank you for your word on tonight. We thank you for the teaching. Allow us to continue to grow in trusting you so that we can go to the next level of your life, of our lives, God. And as we leave this place, but never ever from your presence, please bring us back at the appointed time. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. God bless you. God keep you. This is our prayer. <laughs>